Coach, it appears that the players had a, a meeting to sort of clear the air on some things. Uh, do you think that's something that was needed? And have you heard any word that it worked out and maybe might pay off? Yeah, I think those those kind of things are almost uh, almost always uh, positive in the end, good in the end. Um, and like a lot of things, there's there's words and then there's actions and commitments that, that come out of things. And so, um, it, you know, had a, had a good day today. Uh, probably our fastest, most physical Tuesday, uh, certainly from a defensive standpoint, and that was good. Good to see. Andrew, some of the kind of general themes that seem to come out, the complaints some of the guys who were talking about that meeting was that guys just don't seem to want it enough, or some guys aren't fully locked in. Are those things that you have been kind of seeing? I mean, you've definitely said this is a young team, immature, but is that something that's troubling? That um, a lot of guys are saying that. For some reason, some guys don't seem to quite uh, have the energy, the focus, the to want it enough. Um, I, I don't know exactly. You know, I don't know exactly. Obviously, what you're alluding to, but I think any time, again, any time that that somebody else's actions then affect me, and you know, it it has to almost always show up in a loss, in a real life loss situation for for these guys. Uh, as much as we reinforce it, as much as we try to hammer those things home. In a in a, win, a winning effort, it it needs to sting a little bit more, and hopefully, hopefully it has, it did, and and you learn from it and move forward. After the loss to Colorado, you said that it was a great reaction on Monday, great response, but then maybe a little malaise heading into Friday, Saturday. How do you make sure that you can keep your guys focused and motivated Monday all the way through the game? That's just it. I mean, every everything is about right now. You know, our guys are starting classes this week. They started school yesterday for the first time, and so that's an added layer of potential distraction. And so, just compartmentalizing those moments of, hey, I'm if I'm biology class, if I'm in biology class, I'm the greatest biology student ever. If I'm in a kickoff meeting, I'm the best kickoff cover guy ever. Um, and and just reinforcing that right now is the most important time in their life. Not hey, we want to end with this record. It's how, how do we get there? You know, every single, you know, every single distraction, every single whatever, not, not coming into play. Um, I, you know, the malaise part was uh, just, that was on Saturday. That was, there, there was no malaise prior to that. Awesome, all right. Pinpoint the malaise. Another thing that some guys mentioned after the game was maybe a, a sense among some of the younger players of, maybe a little bit of entitlement or an idea that, you know, at Oregon, you just put on the jersey and you're going to be good. Um, is that anything you've noticed or had to guard against when you've had a certain amount of success for a while? Oh, we've got, I mean, we talk about that again. We've talked about that every year for many, many years here. I, I think going back to even, you know, Coach Bellotti talking about the, the, just the, the, you know, we have a lot of great stuff here and we have a lot of great people here, but we have to earn it every single day. And, and um, that entitlement, that whatever, uh, it cannot exist. And because, and you know, everybody's playing against that and preparing against that, and that can't enter into our mind. We have to harness it and, and, and you know, take advantage of all the things that, that we have in front of us and around us um, and, and use those to our advantage, not something to, to, you know, use as a fake crutch or a false crutch. You guys play Washington State every year. Every year, you're very comfortable with what they run. But does Coach Yost is he able to help out in, in maybe the way Luke Falk thinks when he's back there? Any tendencies that he has? Is he able to kind of help out either the defensive backs or do you guys just talk about that this week at all? Um, a little bit. I mean, there's there's a little um, of that there. Just yeah, just in terms of you know matchups and and what what guys are comfortable doing, what they're not doing. Um, their, their system is, is their system. You know, they're so ingrained and entrenched in what they do. And coach Leach has done it so long and, 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 in, in so many, so many facets, it's the, the beauty is it's simplicity, but it looks very complicated, but it comes back to a very, uh, base set of plays that they are excellent at. And Luke Falk is a fantastic player. Uh, you know, he has all those guys that, you know, whether it's Marks, Marks or Craycraft, and then the screen game with the backs, getting the backs involved in the passing game so much, um, they do a they do a great job. And uh, you know, I think they're they're a little bit different defensively this year. They've made made some changes, so there's not as much of, uh, you know, that 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 uh, insight isn't as as impactful on that side of the ball. Kristen. 
How would you describe the atmosphere in Pullman? I mean, it's a very unique environment with the sidelines so close. I mean, players are saying that they can constantly hear everything that the fans are saying. So how do you prepare maybe the younger guys for that kind of environment? Uh, yeah, we talk about those kind of things, but it's a, it's a fun, you know, it's a great environment in that way. They're, they're great fans, you know, obviously a collegiate town, a, a one horse town, and, and uh, they, they are fired up about their, their football team for sure. Going back to Luke Falk and their passing game, do you feel like they are a quick strike where it's hard to get to the quarterback or they have some routes that give you time to kind of get to them and how do you maybe handle which one of those decisions it is? Yeah, both, both. And that's what makes them so good is they attack you vertically, they attack you horizontally, uh, and then they always have the ability to, to, again, hurt you with the screen game, hurt you with the run game. Uh, you know, they, that was one of the best things they did last year against us was the, the change-ups of the – of the run uh, that, that, you know, obviously got us at the end of regulation and in, in overtime. And, uh, but they you know, it's their system. And, and so that's where you have to weigh, you know, how much pressure, how much coverage, how many, how many looks you give the quarterback and just changing up that, that picture in his, in his head. Aaron? <clears throat> Coach, can you talk a little bit about how the conference has just completely changed in the last five years? In 2010, there were six teams that averaged 25 points or more. Last year, 10 out of 12 averaged 30 points or more. This year, like five or six averaging 40 points or more. And it just it's obvious that the entire conference is way better offensively, which creates more competition for you guys because now you're not the only team scoring 40. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy conference. You know, you see some of the things that happen – last week and I mean the week before that you know every 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 and that's again what's great and frustrating about college football certainly in our seat uh is is that a little bit of you know unknown and and uh the excitement of it um but there's a bunch of great teams a bunch of great coaches and and exceptional competition every week and and you're just talking specifically about the offense or evolution of offense in conference and, and it seems like everyone basically is following what you guys were doing early on I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I think there's, yeah, there's certainly been a lot of emphasis and, 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 you know, when you look at some of the, uh, teams south of us, uh, changes, yeah, changes in, in that vein of, of spread and, and a lot of the similar components. Um, but then there's also, you know, when you look at, uh, whoever, Cal, for example, you know, they've got kind of part the Mike Leach family and part of, of, um, you know, read option, that kind of a, a family. So there's a, f a few marriages and a few cross pollinations of different things. Some of the young offensive linemen were saying they just kind of expect at this point that teams are going to blitz them a lot, contest them, and and you know once they fight back, that maybe they'll back off the blitzes. Do you, especially with Washington State, which twists a lot and likes to blitz, do you expect them to just kind of? turn this into a, a, a test by fire where they just get rushed out a lot until they see if they stand or fall? Yeah, we have to be prepared for that, obviously. Um, you know, they're at their core on defense. They're a, they're a Tampa 2 team that, that you know, they're not a – I, you know, I don't know this for sure, but I think it, if, if he had his way, wouldn't blitz as much. I think, uh, you know, Coach Leach and his influence, I think probably wants to blitz a little more, just, you know, knowing how that affects the quarterback. Um, but yeah, we, we um, uh, did a decent job last week in, in terms of, of pass protection at times. Uh, still a, a bunch of work. I think I think with those guys, it's just reps and confidence. You know, you look at um, Shane Lemieux doing a lot of great things. If he just trusts his footwork a little bit more, I think that guy's going to really, you know, take a couple steps. Brady Aiello, same thing. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll be ready for for that stuff. Obviously, with a bye week, they you know they might do something a little bit differently. Um, they've done you know some five down stuff against us in the past. A lot of pressure stuff uh, the last time we were there with a different defensive coordinator. Um, so we'll, we'll be prepared. Sky. Talking with Jake Hansen, he mentioned that, uh, the starts and finishes of games have not been great on the line specifically. And then um, I guess the offense as a whole, the second, third quarter is pretty great. Do you change anything pregame to get these guys ready to go when, um, from kickoff or how do you approach that? Uh, yeah, I mean, we want to play four quarters. And so you're, you're, you know, you're constantly reinforcing again, every single play matters. And that, that's the thing when you, when you have, um, you know, whatever the situation is, whether it's offense, defense, special teams, wherever, you know, wherever that, that play arises that you're, you're watching tape on, on Monday as a team. And, and it's the, you know, 637, I'm completely making this up the 637 mark of the second quarter, 
where we have two guys in the you know wrong spot or block you know blocking the same guy whatever it is the the mistake that that's it you know that that's your job that's your 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 finger in the dam um of 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 maintaining your you know your role your purpose whatever um all of it matters if I'm the scout team defensive tackle, I matter every single day in practice. Um, if I'm the third string receiver, I have to be healthy because I have to spell those guys in special teams. You know, it's 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 a every person uh, job. Any more questions? With with Brady going through this first year, you know he's using uh, personnel that maybe doesn't quite fit the four three. He's 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 learning on the fly, just like the defense is. How do you? How do you gauge what good defense is, especially going back to Aaron's question about how there's so many more points? I feel like some of it, you know, what, what was good defense in the 80s or 90s doesn't fit that same standard now. Do you go by stats? Do you look at yards per uh, as a marker? Or do you just think, hey, if we're as long as we're one point more than the other team, that's good defense? <laughs> yeah, we don't quite want to get into the break serve mentality that, you know, some yeah you know some people talk about and that that that's again if we're on offense we got to win the game on offense if we're on defense we got to win you know just that attitude uh has to has to be there um you know red zone red zone defense is a huge thing you know field goals over touchdowns obviously is a huge thing uh but i think going back to the the beginning of that is 11 guys playing fast and doing what they're coached to do that's great defense you know and and we haven't gotten to that point where that's happening the majority of snaps and we've got, you know, nine of 11 and those two are really important. And we've got 10 of 11 and that one's really important. And, and so all, all those things together, um, again, as long as we're, we're, we're moving the right direction, as hard as that is to believe or see, um, you know, just a couple of things happened the other day. We got one guy in the wrong gap and the, it happened two or three plays previously where it's a tackle for an eight yard loss. And then it's a 30 yard game. And that's, that's not difficult and that's not a hard thing to solve. It's very frustrating for all of us uh, when it doesn't occur. Um, but the guys, again, they worked hard today to, to get that solved. And these things you're talking about, are they things that simply were not as prevalent on past teams that had better defenses? You had more disciplined guys, guys who knew what they were doing and therefore you guys didn't give up those types of leaky plays? I don't, I don't think there's any time where we never give up you know, those Ever, plays. But I mean, um, guys are more disciplined in the past than maybe what you have right yeah, now. I, I wouldn't use those that that word. I don't know if it's you know. Again, we had the same. This is the same exact guy. Uh, you know, fitting a blitz one time did it right, and one time tried to go over the top when he should. You know, the, the, that's that's. Uh, there's a lot of factors at play other than you know. Obviously, that's the again. That's where I go back. Everything you know. Everything is on us as coaches, and then as long as those those principles are all on the same same page as far as working to, to correct that and, and understanding what was wrong, understanding what was right to play before or play, you know, plays before, uh, everything's going to be okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.